In 2023, I invested in my first stock, which have not generated me 200% return. And in this video, I'm going to break down how I found it, why I bought it, and if I'm going to sell it. Now, back in January of 2023, I didn't know anything about stocks. So how did I find this company? Well, first, I did a lot of research about value investing, also digging deep into the way Warren Buffett and his partner Charlie Munger invested which I found it very fascinating because they believe that if you do some actual good research about a company, then you could potentially get market beating results. So I started researching about a stock screener to speed up the process of actually finding the company. And that is when I found investing.com, which have a free stock screener. I then used this tool to sort out all the good companies from the bad by setting a high return on investment capital, than a low PE, and I do know a PE can be manipulated by earnings or the stock price, but it's just to get an overall overview. Then I set the market cap to around two to $10 billion, and that gave me a series of companies. But the problem is, most of them was within industries that I didn't understand. And according to Warren Buffett, you should invest in companies which is within your circle of competence. And the industry I understood the most was retail. And within this industry, the average return on investment capital is around 10%. So I had to lower the IRIC to find out a business which was within the industry. But the problem is, there was a whole lot. So I did a lot of screening between each individual company by looking at the price to free cash flow ratio and comparing it to the average. Also looking at the debt ratio and comparing that to the industry's average. As the companies within the retail industry tend to have a lot of debt. And that is where I found Sprout Farmers. When it comes to researching about the company, before digging deep into the 10 case, I first used Seeking Alpha or the free version of Seeking Alpha to see what we're actually working with here. And that gave me an overview of the total debt compared to the cash flow, then how many shares the company has bought back within the past five years, which in my opinion is extremely crucial because it shows that the management actually cares about the investors and it also brings value to the investors. And I would rather see the company buying back shares than the company paying a dividend. But we also have to take into consideration that the company is small. It is within that two to $10 billion market cap. And that means the company is growing. And when we have a growing company, it requires cash flow to be reinvested into the business. And that could bring more value than share buybacks. After finding out about these things, I started digging into the 10K, which to be honest, I was not really good at because first of all, I didn't know how to read it and what was important. So I just started reading from A to C and I didn't understand one bit of it. But then I came across the MDNA, Management Discussion and Analysis. And that is basically where a company explains how it made money and its plans. And that really opened my eyes because it showed me the way Sprout Farmers operates and why it earned so and so that specific year, which is very important. I also found out that the company's management is very transparent when it comes to talking about bad things. Then I read the financial statement and that also gave me an overview of how healthy the company's balance sheet is. And all of this I did over a five year period, take notes of each year, which I then used at the end to make a conclusion to whether the company is healthy or not. And I found out that the company was pretty healthy based on high return on investment capital, strong cash flow growth, great management, etc. Now, when it comes to putting a specific price on Sprout Farmers, I used the discounted cash flow model where I made an estimation of the future cash flow growth, which I put at 6% based on the historical data and the growth potential in the future, which I will get into later in the video. But there was a problem, as they have been positively affected by COVID, meaning growth has slowed down these past two years. But as I said, there was some decent growth potential within the business, and that could turn the negative decline into a stabilization, which then could make the business grow from there. I used a discount rate of 5.66% by calculating the WAC, and I used a perpetual rate of 2.5%. And that gave me an intrinsic value of $85, where I used my margin of safety, which is 30%, as there is a lot of guessing within that discounted cash flow model. This then leaves us with a final price of $60, and given the current price was $36, it meant the business was undervalued and had a difference from its intrinsic value of 138%.
Now looking at the discounted cash flow spreadsheet of Sprout Farmers, I made the average growth rate from 2013 to 2022, which was about 32.5%. But why did I then say the growth rate should be 6%? Well, it was because Sprout Farmers was positively affected by COVID in 2020, meaning we saw a decline in cash flow growth from 2020 to 2022, as we couldn't keep up the pace from 2020. But we also have to take into account that Sprout Farmers is growing because of some factors that I will get into later in the video. So I made a growth rate of about 6%. Then I calculated the terminal value by using the discount rate and the perpetual growth rate, and also the last year of free cash flow growth. I then got the sum of free cash flow, I plus that with cash and cash equivalents, as when there's cash in the business, we also have to take that into account. And I then minus all the debt, and that led us to the equity value. We then divided the equity value by the shares are standing. That gives us the discounted cash flow price per share, which is $85. Then we used our margin of safety of 30%. And that gives us a result of $60. And the current price of Sprout Farmers at the time was $36, meaning the difference from the discounted cash flow price per share or the intrinsic value to the current share price was 138%, meaning it was a buy. When it comes to investing, we want companies that will be around for the next 5 to 10 years. And for that, they need a strong mode. One way to identify mode is by looking at the average income of their customers. For example, at Sprout Farmers Market, the average shopper earns around fifty to one hundred thousand dollars a year, which is middle to upper class. This is higher than Walmart's average, where shoppers earn between forty and sixty thousand dollars. The difference, though, comes down to Sprout Farmers selling more premium health-focused groceries compared to Walmart. If we compare Sprout Farmers to other health-aware competitors like Whole Foods, their shoppers earn between eighty thousand and one hundred thousand annually. So it's not as easy to identify a clear mode, but considering that Sprout's customers earn a decent income, it's likely that even during tough economic times, they still have loyal customers. Sprout Farmers is known for high quality products, which helps their brand stand out and gives brand recognition. They also have a strong balance sheet compared to competitors. While most supermarkets have an average profit margin of about 2%, Sprouts nearly doubles that at 3.6%. They have much less debt than their peers and a good return on investment capital of 11%. So it being my first stock, I didn't invest a whole lot of capital, only around $1,000, because I wanted to see if my theory was actually right, and if it was, I could start investing more heavily into individual stocks instead of index funds. So in June, I bought around 27 shares of Sprout Farmers Market. Holding a stock for 5 to 10 years is very difficult for the average investor, as the average holding period for a stock in the US is only 10 months. Now, the first month I personally held Sprout Farmers, the stock was already up with 6%, which was unexpected, but I didn't really feel any reason to sell, so I held the stock all the way until May 2024, where I was up 100% on the stock. And here I needed to reevaluate the company and find out if it was overvalued. In my opinion, it didn't really seem like it, as their cash flow was still steadily growing and they have opened in more stores. Now, in September 2024, or today, I am up 200% on the stock, which makes me wonder, should I sell? And I haven't really decided it yet, so I have to reevaluate the company again and see if I think the company still has potential over the next 49 years. And so far, it actually looks alright as they have a PE of around 30, which is a bit high, and a price to free cash flow ratio in the low to mid 20s. So the stock is definitely not cheap. That was how I earned 200% on my first stock within a year. And thank you so much for watching. But if you want to maybe start day trading, I've made a full free course, which you can watch right here.